I picked up this nice wooden spoon at a jumble sale. Maybe birch wood or perhaps juniper. Um, spoons were ubiquitous in this area in, well, before the 1800s, in the 18th century. The pop forks were not very popular, or at least they spread very slowly through northern Europe, and uh, most people just had a knife and a spoon to eat with, and the fork would have been perhaps just a two-pronged affair. And these ones always turn up at jumble sales because I don't think people realise uh, quite how old they are. My guess is this one is 200 years old. This is a modern one. It's mass produced in Telemark, as far as I know. But you see, they have lost a bit that uh, understanding of the strength of the wood fibres. That thick bit on the old one is not present on the new one. So they have kind of uh, lost a little bit that understanding that people had about woodwork here when the industrial age has taken over and they have a kind of more engineering knowledge and the wish to save materials and make a profit takes the upper hand. Uh, something else I got, at, this is something I got at the jumble sale last week. nice isn't it? It was a bit damaged, uh, there was a chunk missing so I changed the shape of the spoon and I think it would have been slightly pointed when it was when it was first made but I'm taking the point off in order to get rid of the bit that was chipped. Again they haven't really managed to keep that nice thick bit there which should be there from the traditional spoons and often people just don't really understand that's a modern one, it's probably done by someone who went for a hobby, you know, of course, carving. Here's one of the spoons that I've made, on, uh, proudly displayed on a beautiful soap finished pine kitchen table. This one's also made of birch, or possibly elm. A bit of water on there, isn't it? Strictly speaking, the next one's a cup. It's called a tu uh, which means a travelling spoon. It's what your backpack has taken or I've made uh, out of a piece of birch. Now we wash these in the dishwasher and have done right away, always. So uh, this is about 10 years old, maybe 15 years old. This one maybe has a little. Oh, there was a little split there. As long as they dry out quite quickly, it's not a problem. Jumble sale find, souvenir from Bergen, Auckland's Hall, Auckland's Holden, Minna Bergen, it means memory from Bergen. And quite often traditionally these spoons are made out of juniper, but uh, birch in Scandinavia grows very slowly, so birch works on it too. This is an old one. That's actually from an antique shop. But it's had a lot of use. It's been worn down. So as I was saying before, these uh, the spoons were... Spoon and a knife was more normal for kind of country folk. Forks. Uh, well, there's a kind of class divide with that, really. For a long time I was just looking up a little bit about forks, the history of forks, and for a long time they were uh, actually, the church was against them. I don't know, 
exactly why. But they've been using forks in Europe for about 900 years or 1,000 years. I think 900 years. But it was mostly an upper class thing originally. This is the rose painting. There's one my son made when he was about seven at the campfire. That was also was just made at the campfire. Just using a piece. Because we usually take our birch wood with us when we go camping so as not to cut from the forest because we camp usually in an area where it's virgin forests. So we take birch wood with us to have on the campfire which smells nice as well. But as I said, birch wood here grows very slowly and is very useful. It's used for all kinds of things. It's not uncommon to use it for axe handles. Perhaps where you might use a different kind of hardwood in another country where the grow growing seasons have a different nature. Because I know that uh, birch was very ill-considered in Britain but uh, really you just can't compare with the wood it very much depends on where the trees grow how they grow as to what kind of wood you get how useful it is so really none of these things can be very easily transferred it's all right east-west but north-south is a bit tricky there we go oh, there's a little collection of Norwegian wooden spoons and letter opener. So two of which are homemade. That one is, I think, mass produced, but it, it's it's handmade, but it's made for them to sell. Those two are the oldest. Like that other one that I showed, a couple hundred years old, from the days when a lot of people didn't really use forks, or if you had a fork, it was just a kind of two pronged affair that you used occasionally. Most people just ate with a, a spoon and a knife. At least I'm talking about farmer folk, which is most of the Norwegian people were like that actually. I mean there were very few upper class people in Norway because just it was that's not the way the not the way it worked. Because Norway was under foreign rule and so it had foreign aristocrats. It didn't have Norwegian aristocrats really. That's one of the reasons why it's quite a egalitarian country now because it never really established an upper class in the same way that many other countries did. Okay, there we go. That's a history lesson over. This is uh, another spoon. But actually it's part of a chain. It would have had a wooden chain and had another spoon at the other end. It's a, an engagement spoon and engagement symbol ritual. This is the first in a three-part series of films where I look at some of the collection of little wooden handmade things that I've got in the household here. Um, so the next one will be about knives and then after that I'm going to do one about making wooden covers for axes, um, ways to use up old axe handles. So thanks very much for watching. Thanks for the subscribers and the Patreons. Uh, for your involvement and your participation in the comments, which is nice and lively. Um, well, I'm a bit embarrassed to ask, but uh, YouTube is constantly asking me to uh, suggest that you click the like button and subscribe to the channel. They're so desperate for everybody to be watching YouTube all of the time. So there we go. I'm asking you now, please click like, subscribe and share. Oh, yes. Bye.